In a previous video I showed you how to make these river cane and bamboo arrow shafts and in this video we're going to fletch them using a fletching method that was present in the southeastern United States, some of the Midwest as well. Very simple, effective fletching method. So to start here, just trim off the back end of it where quill is weaker and then you just trim out this little tab so you can tie the fletching down. Match it up with the, about approximately the length of your previous arrows. Doesn't have to be perfect. And also which side you tear part of the vein off from determines how it how you twist it around the shaft, the direction of the twist. Now you just take scissors and trim it up. Scissors make this process a lot easier than the old method of laying it down on a board or something and trimming it with a knife or a flake. And then we just need to trim up this quill on the interior here. I'm going to be careful when you're doing this. This is kind of like whittling fingernails with a pocket knife. If you ever try that, you know it doesn't work very well. Feathers kind of act the same way. They Suddenly your knife can dive into them and ruin the fletching. That will happen to you a few times probably. So just expect it and we'll figure out how to do it reason we're doing this is to make this feather more flexible flexible so we can torque it around the arrow shaft and it'll lay down like we want it to. And I'm going to take my feathers and put them in some water. Just get them wet so they're more pliable and a little bit more elastic. Just need to really get them kind of damp. If you don't do this you tie on your feathers in a drier climate and then you start shooting them in a wetter climate they might bow out a little bit from the, the arrow. In that case you can just redo the fletching or retie it so that it lays down like you want it to. Now I'm going to take some sandpaper, this is 60 grit, and rough up the back of this for about an inch or inch and a half front of the knock where we're going to tie on the back of the fletching. This is because cane and bamboo have this slick waxy outer rind that prevents the glue and string from adhering nicely to it. Sand that up a little bit. Take our tie bond high glue that I typically use. Give that a little coating. Then I like to use this natural linen thread. Very strong, sturdy stuff. It allows the glue to soak into it. It's all natural. I don't like waxed nylon. People typically call sinew or artificial sinew. And we'll lay in these feathers. So you notice here that I'm going to lay this feather in using the knock of the arrow as an index. So I'm going to put it on the inside of the knock usually. This might take some trial and error for you, but to find what you like best. The length of the feather will also dictate how it uh, torques around the shaft when you give it the radial or the, the twisted effect. That'll dictate, dictate uh, where you want to lay the back of these feathers in. So just mess around with it until you find something that works for you. I generally lay the back ends 
along the inside of the knock. So I've just done one thin wrapping to the back. Now at this point if you're using a Mediterranean type release you can just tie it off. I'm going to build up a little bumper string since I use an assisted pinch grip. Um, a lot of Native American archers use assisted pinch grips and uh, this works better with some kind of flared knock. Sometimes I did this by just what I'm doing here, building up a little bumper of string. And mixed with the high glue, this natural linen thread works really well for this. Once the glue dries, it'll be a rock solid binding. And typically I'll just finish it off with a half hitch. Having a damp rag is really handy when you're mix messing with this high glue. It's very sticky stuff, so if you don't want everything sticking to your fingers, it's handy to have that for some water. One last coating of glue there. And then the front, we're going to measure where these feathers are going to lay down. So it looks like it's going to be right in front of this node here. Sand that up. And then we're going to pull these feathers forward and twist them around until they are twisted and in line with the interior of the knock. So we want the feathers to be vertical in line with that interior of the knock. It's going to lay up against the string and they'll lay across the bow just like that. So that's why where you put the back end of these things is key to how much twist you want and uh, getting them to lay down in there properly so they're in line with the knock just like you want them. Then once you get them started, just checking to make sure that they're oriented properly. I'm looking especially back here at the back, at this space, to make sure that that looks pretty good. It's not perfect on this one. It doesn't have to be perfect, honestly. I think a lot of people put a lot of time into making arrow is just absolutely perfect. Some people are really good at it. I like just functional arrows and these fly well for me. They spin in flight and they shoot straight and consistently for me. It's really a very easy fletching method to do. It only takes two feathers instead of three, although you might be able to get more out of your radial technique if you have big feathers and you trim them up right. It's important that you smooth everything out. You don't want to have any bumps or little 
ridges or things sticking up because you're, if you're shooting off your hand, those can cut you. Just a little bitty bump of string or feather. It's got glue and it's hard. Sticking out there can cut your hand when you shoot across it. Once it's dry, I'll use shellac to smooth this over even more and protect the these bindings from water. But let that dry and that's pretty much it. That's the southeastern style two feather fletch. So here are two finished fletchings. I've put two layers of shellac usually on the front of these. That really helps smooth down those bindings and makes them comfortable to shoot. And you also notice that they have the veins torn off on different sides and that's caused them to be twisted in different directions. And the last thing is that on this top one, the back of the feather is tied down right in the center of that knock and that's about as, as twisted as I preferred. I usually tie them down more on this side of the knock if they're going to twist that way, over here if they're going to twist that way.